What's up, everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and this video is brought to you by BrandManNetwork.com because I signed myself. Now, I got a very special snippet from a very special interview with Evan Owens. If you do not know who Evan Owens is, he's the director of merchandising for Love Renaissance, and Love Renaissance is actually one of the most prolific young labels in my opinion considering not only the age of the label itself but the people who are involved and what i find to be incredibly interesting is the fact that there are five founders of the organization and from an outside point everybody goes through their things but from an outside standpoint they've been able to run things relatively smoothly right and move as a team how do they do that when so many other people have problems right actually being able to run as a team because i know so many people are having that problem well here's evan's thoughts on how they're able to do what they do so well it's the network because you have obviously been at a part in or around the evolution of love runner science which is you know they're doing their thing and you've seen so many other elements around it just especially georgia state in general like there's so many branches of creativity that has come out of that space what do you feel like is one of the things that has made not only like Love Renaissance uh, successful in the way that they are right now, but just a lot of creatives that you've seen go from, yeah, you're just in college to you're actually moving in this industry and doing your thing. For sure. Uh, it's definitely building a team. Um, mm -hmm. The team is, the team is the most important thing when it comes to actually, you know, turning something from a creative idea to actual, you know, success, because there's only so far that you could go by yourself you know what I mean? Like you need people that are going to be able to, you know, handle tasks and handle responsibilities. Yep. So yeah, that's everybody working in tandem and everybody taking on their responsibility. Like for me, for example, like any decision that happens with merchandising, the team trust me to handle it. You know, mm -hmm. they're not going around in a circle like, yo, this, we think this, or we think this, it's just like, all right, if Evan is the expert in this handle and, and it fumbles, then I take the responsibility as well. So mm. being accountable for the decisions that they make, you know, is going to just make the team better. And you help, you feel like it makes y'all run smoother that way too? Because like at the end of the day, man, like even you look at the founders of Love Renaissance, right? There's five dudes, right? And I just from my outside, when I first saw like just all of them, I remember just at one time, I just remember for some reason the thought clicked in my head was like the problems that so many groups or things I've been around have had just in, and how that's like derailed success. Like how did they, how do you feel like they handle themselves so much differently and figure out how to actually move through any kind of disagreements because i know disagreements happen in general anywhere that's just a thing but what helps that and you, you know you're in that system what helps it be more successful and keep working its way through versus just falling off for sure uh, again it's everybody being accountable you know um for whichever part of the system that they're responsible for mm. and that that keeps everyone you know not necessarily on their toes, but makes them want to continue to push further. You know what I'm saying? So if I see, um, you know, Carlin pushing crazy and, and, and you know, doing everything that he got to do, it's only going to push me to, all right, I can't slack either. I got to keep going and handle everything that I got to handle to the highest level. Yeah. Yeah. That's real. So, I mean, with that being said, man, because we talk about team and experiences, like you have that experience and you've seen other people be dope and you're dope yourself. And now you're managing as well. How do you look at recruiting people and, and bringing people into the fold of the things you do? For sure. So when it comes to um, just building teams, period, you got to be able to trust, you know, you, you have to be able to, um, be able to give somebody a responsibility or a task and delegate and trust that they'll get it done. And if they don't mm. get it done, they're going to accept the responsibility and figure out a way to, you know, make things right. Um, mm. When it comes to, to management, it's, um, it's a lot more than just recruiting clients, I'd say, because like management is, is a passion thing. Mm. 
You know, it, it, ta it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of energy. You really have to care about the entity or the system that, you know, you're a part of when it comes to, when it comes to that. But definitely building out of the team is the most important when it, when it comes down to the videographers or the photographers or the admin. Just any, any person that's going to be an important part of your system, you know, you, you need to check them for character. It's the network. All right. Now, if you want to check out that full interview, you can check it out at brandmannetwork.com. But first and foremost, I want to make sure it's really understood that when Evan's talking and we're talking about how Love Renaissance is ran and just how they're managed, managing to grow and build what they have done, I want to make sure it's understood that the impact that they've been able to make right? They're a relatively young record label, not just in years, but the individuals who are involved. And it had five founders at the very beginning. And for them to be able to grow and make the impact that they've made, right? And still run relatively smoothly, right? Of course, you don't know everything that's going on behind the scenes and all that stuff, but just to still be able to make that impact and run smoothly, it is a testament to teamwork, a testament to those two things that he said, which are accountability and trust. Those things are extremely important. So I want to go a slightly different direction though on two other things that are very important that he didn't know when we're talking about building those teams right you should find people that not only taking accountability for what they're doing but really over delivering on top of that usually those are the type of people who truly take accountability for those types of things because I had a boss one time when I was in um, college right and I was a student assistant and he told me he was like yo man Look, if you aren't making my life easier, then I don't need you, right? He, he said that, and I, and I understood what he said or, and what he was talking about in hindsight. I didn't get at the moment, and this is a time when I wasn't doing a lot of things that I needed to do. And when I, not only am I saying that, but even when I was trying to do them, I was going to him for help. And his whole idea was, look, if I have to help you with all this stuff, then... I don't need you because it's like me doing it myself. The whole idea is for you to be able to do it so I can keep moving. Leading back to that accountability, that's that same mindset that people on your team have to have. Like they have to be able to figure out things for themselves. When you start building teams of people like that who have that accountability to actually try to push themselves to learn and figure things out. But then when they don't get it right, they make sure they try to fix it and they, they don't try to hide it. Then, you know, you're starting to get the makings of a good set of team members. Those are some extremely important things to keep a note of. But beyond that, if they don't deliver on that, if these people don't have those traits and you start to figure that out, then that's only going to leave you with a few options, right? One option is, oh, okay, I thought you were going to be this capacity. You're going to be doing this role, but you're not taking that initiative. I'm having to tell you to do everything. You're, you're procrastinating. You don't really have deadlines. You move too slow, then I'm just going to either downgrade what you do, right? You don't, I'm not, I, don't, I don't expect you to do as much. So you also don't have as integral as a role to my team or, right, you can actually just straight up say, yo, this isn't going to work. Whatever one, you know, you can judge that in your particular, uh, your, your particular uh, situation. But understand, there's a lot of people that say they want things, especially when we're talking about the music. They say they want to like hustle and they want and they want a certain position and they want to build. But for whatever reason, right, you, you put them in positions and they don't really do much. Right. They, they, they're they procrastinating. They, they, they fall into whatever lazy trap or they don't understand the level of work ethic and, and hustle. And some people, for whatever reason, just don't know how to think to that next level to predict things that you might need to get done. So anybody who's just doing the work just doing the work is at least trustworthy, right? But if they're just doing the work, they're also probably not going to be able to get to that next level. And you might not have that as a true like main team member. This might be somebody who has is more so employed than building your organization as a co-founder or your primary structure, your executive board, however you want to state it, because you need people who see problems, people who understand what needs to be done and, and, are, and have some sort of vision, the ability to actually improve that process and understand what else is going on with the organization and how can we make this better together. And if you don't have those type of people, then you're going to have a hard time building a strong organization, which means for you, if you're an artist, you have a hard time building a strong career. But once again, you have the choice. You can get rid of those folks or you can downgrade their expectations and what they deliver and keep moving. Right? You know, you know, you pay them as a position, some sort of employee. They're cool. They're around. They're trustworthy to do a little bit. Then, yeah, keep them around. But 
once again, if they aren't delivering at all, then like, what's the point? It's, it's hard to fire people. A lot of people, uh, they move on higher quickly, right? Or no, fire higher slowly. I hear this often from a lot of my CEO friends and mentors, hire slowly, fire quickly. That mentality is essentially this, right? You always want to find the right people. You don't want to just bring anybody on your team, but fire quickly. Like when it's wrong, it's wrong. Don't hesitate on that because you're only going to hate it, right? You're, you're wasting their time too, right? You're, you're, but you're even more so wasting your time and you're doing yourself a disservice. At the end of the day, they could find something else. Maybe they'll find something that is for them because this ain't going to work. So keep that in mind. Just a few tips. Not only Evan's thoughts, who's who's super dope, man. And once again, if you want to check out that full interview, you can check it out at brandmannetwork.com. And if you like this video, go ahead and like button. If you like it, you might as well share. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe.